Today, I want to take you on a journey on how we can make change the way we make things. When I traveled to Bonn, I was hungry and I needed some snack. So I bought a cereal bar and I was lucky to find an organic product at least, but still throwing that little plastic packaging into the bin made me feel guilty. Why? Because I was con contributing potentially to the global plastic pollution, to climate change and to con the consumption of non-renewable resources. All this just because of a tiny piece of packaging. In that case, I did my best to dispose it correctly into the right bin, so hopefully it gets recycled. But honestly, I couldn't control it from there on. And the sad reality is that on a global scale, studies show that only 9% of all plastic waste gets recycled. And that means it enters the recycling streams, not yet what, what's coming out. And over 70% of all plastic waste ends up in landfills or directly in the environment and in the oceans and stays there forever, breaking down into smaller pieces, into microplastics, a toxic threat for humans and animals. Just to put this into perspective, on our Earth, the total mass of plastic in the environment is more than double the amount of living humans and animals together, and it will become more every year. So the common conclusion to that is, wow, we have a plastic problem. But what shall we do? How could I, for example, do my favorite hobby of kite surfing without plastics? How could I have traveled by train to Bonn without plastics? Or how could I even click these slides without plastics? We don't have a plastic problem. We have a product design problem. Because here is how in most cases, nowadays, products are, are, are made. We take valuable resources from the earth and they are getting scarcer and scarcer. Then we make products, but we focus the product design primarily on the primary function and the costs. And after use, these products become waste and we dispose them. And then we try to recycle what has been disposed and we call that circular economy. But how to recycle my cereal bar wrapping, which was made from fossil-based multi-layered polymers plus metals plus pigments, when the recycling was not considered in the first place? I can tell you, it's not possible. So we don't have a plastic problem, but we have a product design problem. So we need to change the way we, m we make things. And therefore, it starts with a new mindset. Instead of using 10% less plastics in our product. Instead of being less bad, we, try to re we need to rethink our products and produce overall good products. Instead of thinking recycling from the end of a product's lifetime, we need to eliminate the term waste in our heads. And we need to start um, redesigning our products and with that increase the overall positive impact with our production. But that requires a new understanding of product quality. So if we only recycle what appears in the collection streams, all we can do is downcycling. Because, for example, my cereal bar wrapping or it might have a second life as a flower pot, but that's all I can promise. So much too often we, use, we blend polymers together and much too often we, we, we use much too many additives. And in that case, promise me, you don't want your next cereal bar to touch these additives in the recycled packaging. So we need to design products with healthy materials um, that can be fully recovered after the use without quality loss. And this design concept is called the cradle to cradle design principle. And this is how it works. Healthy materials circulate in closed loops in two cycles, in the technical cycle and in the biological cycle. And in the technical cycle, this is for all durable goods that can be really disassembled to the monomers with the same quality and used again, over and over again. And this applies for durable goods like the kite equipment or the washing machine, where really the, the loop is closed. For everything that can end up in the environment or which just cannot be recycled, we need the biological cycle, which is based on renewable resources like plants and the product 
products can be reintegrated safely into the biological cycle after use. And then ideally, we don't need more resources and we don't create waste. And yes, that requires that we redesign all our products from the beginning. And yes, that is hard work. But it is the only way how can we can achieve a regenerative economy within our planetary boundaries. And there are many good examples already, companies that are producing their products according to the cradle-to-cradle -cradle design principle. But let's come back to my cereal bar. So, in concrete terms, how can we design the cereal bar wrapping then? In that case, the technical cycle is quite challenging because most often many different additives are used and the today's recycled plastics contain these additives, which might be toxic for the food contact. And also the littering potential is quite high when I eat it and have it in my pocket. So for that use case, it's better to use the biological cycle. So how does that work? Let's have a look into nature. Nature also produces a lot of disposable single-use packaging, like nut, pack nut packaging or orange packaging, for example. But instead of becoming waste, nature's packaging composts and becomes new nutrients for new plants to grow. So what if we made materials exactly following that concept, so that no matter where they end up, they do not harm and leave no trace? And exactly with that concept, I started Traceless. Following the cradle-to-cradle -cradle design principles, I developed a novel biomaterial for the biological cycle that can substitute plastics in all applications where products easily end up in the environment or just cannot be recycled. So let me give you an example on how we can change the way we make things. The traceless material is based on plants, on non-food resi resi uh, resources, so we use the byproducts of the food production. And we make use of the power of nature. What we use is the natural polymers inside, and we found a way how to convert these natural polymers into granulates that look like plastic, but they are not plastic. But they have the unique property that they can be processed on machines where usually plastics are processed. And they can be molded into paper coatings, uh, rigid forms or flexible, coating, uh, flexible uh, films. And they can be then used for all products or, uh, many products that can easily end up in the environment or just cannot be recycled. Products made from, fr from traceless are made for the biological cycle. So they become nutrient for new plants to grow after use. You might now say, that sounds like bioplastics. I've heard of that phrase before. Um, but here's the situation. Current bioplastics are usually differentiated between their resource, so bio-based or fossil-based, or their ability to degrade. But what they all have in common is that they are synthetically, synthetical polymers, synthetical materials. So nature doesn't know them. So their ability to degrade in, in nature is quite low. They, if only, de degrade in industrial composting plants. In order to solve the global plastic pollution, for the biological cycle, we need materials that really degrade in nature. And on the, on the other hand side, we also need materials that are not just bait based on food, but that are based on food residues. And this is how we designed Traceless. Traceless is a natural polymer, a natural material, that degrades under natural composting conditions in just a few weeks without leaving a trace, but only nutrients for new plants to grow. But being designed for compostability is not enough for having an overall positive impact. So we made sure that besides the traceless compostability, the traceless material is also 100% safe for humans and nature. That means that we only use positively defined materials for the, for the production and the product. That is not easy. 99% of the chemical, um, chemicals we cannot use, but this is our principle. We made sure that the material doesn't leave any microplastics after degradation. We made sure that the material is based on 100% bio-based materials and doesn't compete with food. And we also made sure that the energy consumption is as low as possible and it causes up to 95% less CO2 emissions than conventional plastics. 
But what's also important in order to make an impact is that the material is competitive in price and quality on industrial scale production. And here's why this material has such a big potential to have a positive impact. The material is a so-called thermoplast. That means that it is able to be melted when heated. And this is a very important property that common plastics like polyethylene or poly polypropylene also have. And that means that the classical plastic converters can put the traceless granulates into their machines instead of the plastic granulates. And then while heated, after heating, you can mold these materials into rigid products in injection molding, into flexible films and extrusion, or to coat it on paper to give it barrier properties. And with these products, many different applications can be used, especially those applications that easily end up in the environment or just cannot be recycled. The material itself has unique properties like plastics. For example, it has a fat barrier, a moisture barrier, barrier against oxygen, and it's also heat sealable. So that makes it applicable, for example, for many packaging applications. But it makes it also applicable for single-use items like cutlery or to-go cups. And especially there, at the moment, the EU is banning a lot of these products if made from plastics. But basically, the EU is also saying the only material that is allowed is natural materials, like traceless, for example. But traceless can also be used for all the hidden plastics, like coatings, paper coatings and adhesives. Hidden plastics are a major cause for microplastic formation if these uh, materials end up in nature or in the paper recycling streams. Of course, we cannot substitute all substances, all products um, with our material. My kite surf equipment or the lemonade bottle still needs to be produced from plastics. So for that, we need the technical cycle. But the demand for materials for the biological cycle is huge. And this is understandable because there are not many materials out there for the biological cycle. Only two years old, we already achieved to scale up the material production, the granulate material production, to our first own production plant. And also first pioneering co companies are applying this material in their single-use products. Our aim is to make the biggest possible contribution to the global plastic pollution, and therefore, in the future, we will scale this material production as fast as possible. But we are not the only ones providing great solutions. But with this example, I wanted to show you that it is possible. There are solutions to make us live in a regenerative economy within our planetary boundaries. But the first thing needed is that we as leaders have the right mindset. It is not enough to be less bad, to just use 10% less plastics in your products. Next year, you will increase your production by 20%. We don't have time for this. Instead, turn it around. Envision a world where you even create a positive impact and ask yourself, how should my production and product design look like in order to achieve that? But what's also needed is the right team. People that cannot accept the business as usual anymore. People that are curious for new solutions, that aim for the stars and that want to make the change happen. But we alone, we cannot solve the global plastic pollution. For that, we need much more, much more materials for the biological cycle and many more material and also product design solutions for the technical cycle. And we need collection systems and reuse systems and education. So I want to encourage scientists, politicians, institutions, startups and global corporates to follow us on our path and be part of the solution, not part of the pollution. Thank you.